Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of Cold Case Files, a rhyme of the frost made an actual game. Thank you for joining us tonight. So, when last we left off, uh, your intrepid DM accidentally left himself muted the entire second half of episode six, so you only heard what the players were saying and not what the DM was saying. Oops. Uh, luckily, uh, not too much in terms of a huge story development happened during that time, so a lot of what was happening was the players chatting amongst themselves, so it worked out great. Except for the last five minutes of the campaign when something big did happen that I described in all of my muted. So, we are going to rewind a little bit so that you guys can hear that and uh, see that live action, but until then, what happened last session was that the players came out of the dungeon in Town Hall in East Haven, having guarded the cold Hunty all night, having just fought the bandits that tried to steal it. They confronted the speaker of the town, assuming that he was somehow involved, but were persuaded that he probably was not involved, especially due to his heavy drinking habit that he seemed to have. The characters returned to the inn for a while and, and rested before deciding that they needed to move on, so they moved down into the inn to talk to someone that they had overheard uh, was, or had been told, rather, was going to be familiar with the ectoplasmic goo that they pulled out of the serial killer that they fought. And that's when they were introduced to their contact at an academy, who basically offered them a lot of money to wander around Icewind Dale and do his bidding. Edgar said yes before I even finished asking the question. One of the quests that they were set upon was to retrieve some Shardolin, some of that weird black metallic substance that has been floating around Icewind Dale for him to study. Of course, their first thoughts were, let's go steal it from Town Hall. Uh, they went and they tried to talk the speaker into giving it to them. He declined, and the players decided that, you know what, maybe it's not a good idea to steal it literally 30 seconds after I asked for it. And that's where we left off, back in their inn, as they were discussing how they were going to retrieve the Shardolin from Town Hall. All right, so uh, we have, well, I, we can do it. Go ahead. I was going to say, I have potions that can alter my appearance or the appearance of others. So we can, I mean, we can make ourselves look different. Um, I, I imagine that we could do that. We could pretend to be disciples of the Temple of Morden. I can't make myself much larger than I currently am, but neither you could pass well enough for a, a different dwarf, and I could pass for a uh, lighter dwarf. Um, Hawk? Mm. I think now's the time. All right. Although we'll be back in a week, but yes. All right, but... Hmm. Up to you. Okay, so there's... I can make it so that I can go in and uh, I don't need your potion. Uh, um, hmm. All right, fine. Let me just show you. Rob? So, as you watch... Let me describe. As you watch, Mina closes her eyes for a brief moment, and you watch her features shift in front of you. And... In a matter of a moment, she no longer looks like the dwarf that you were entering. She's now standing about a foot taller and is in the form of a male half-elf. Closing their eyes once again, a rather tall gnome now stands in front of you. Closing her eyes once again, a red dragon boy takes form in front of you. Or mean its form turns to or what you I have a number of questions 
I do as well. I <laughs> what you might. Uh, so there that is. That's uh No, no, we we're not there that is this. We're not there that is in this. I I ha is it is it your armor? Is does your armor change up? Because most most magic that changes forms doesn't change it that drastically. There's there are rules to well generally the amount of space you can take up and how much you can compress yourself. Right, it's it's not really a a, a magic per se. Uh, it's just me. I have more questions than I did before. Um, I do, you seem confused. Just sits down the bed and says, ask away. Right, uh, not Wraith, jeez. Uh, Hawk is just going to kind of <laughs> go over and start like, sh you know, sharpening his swords and just kind of <laughs> <laughs> let this happen. And <laughs> I've seen this. <laughs> I seem very like, so... pleased that it's happening, but also just like, yep, let you guys have your moment. <laughs> so... And and forgive me if this is a disrespectful question. Um, are are you are you Mina? The, is that who you are, or are you? For now, yeah. That's not an answer. It is an answer. Not a good one. Uh, okay. As you know me, I am Mina. I Fine, see. That's a better answer. But for now, let's. But the for now part is the part that is puzzling to me. But also, the how. The, it's not magical, but it's... All right. So, I'm not sure if you've, if you've heard of us, but I'm um, what you call a changeling. I can, I can just be someone else. I've... There's, there's not many here. To be fair, um, you don't meet many of us just on the road. So I don't tell people very often. So do you do you have a family? Are, are they other? Are they changelings? I, I'm not familiar. I assume so. I don't know them. I really don't. Oh. I knew them, uh, but I don't know them now. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I've just seen them in nearly 20 years, so. You knew them, but you don't know them now. That just creates more questions. Well, I, um, I lived with another family for a long time uh, till I made my way on my own. Do you just not remember your original family? I mean, to be fair, they they could be anyone. Well, but did you ever know who they were? Was there was I there? Mean, a... I knew them until I was about six years old. Um, so I remember what you remember of your parents until you were six years old. Well, and which is not much. Oh, really? And. To be fair. Hawk, you 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 knew about this. You knew about all this. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> are are you a, a a changeling? No, we just had a talk one night. Oh. You were sleeping. What? I don't sleep. Sorry. Re <laughs> Remember in the one cave when I lent my fox to help guide her through the darkness. I'm, was that when I was picking up bones? Yes. Probably. Okay, I mean, that makes sense. I, I wouldn't remember. I remember that, I recall, but I thought you were... I thought you were just being either difficult or maybe you were hiding <laughs> to a blind? Or... I, I didn't well, think you were I entirely was different. I to try and pass it off as I was a dwarf with a, with a birth defect of I didn't <laughs> actually have uh, dark vision, but so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Talk about it again, so I let it go. You can just decide to look. It, it, 
And as as he's trying to form this question, I just turn into him. <laughs> Give me a performance check. <laughs> a taller version of him, though. Only slightly. Hmm. Oh, I don't have good performance. <laughs> please, please, please. It's... It's not a it's flattering a recreation virgin. of you, Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not intentionally insulting, but um, it's not quite right. It's, she's, and she's it's, just kind it's, of it's doing bizarro, it. Yeah, it's bizarro, Edgar. <laughs> okay, that is... First of all, rude. <laughs> <laughs> And I just My chin does now. not look like that. Second of all, <laughs> I. What is it? Is it an illusion? Are you, are you changing your physical structure? All right, I'll put your hand. Hmm, let me see. Put your hand on my face, and I'll let you feel it as I change. Gladly, Edgar slaps her. <laughs> <laughs> Mina slaps him back. Edgar slaps himself and back. <laughs> <laughs> and five minutes later, the slap back, fight ends. Way. I changed back to Mina. Edgar, are you familiar with the spell Alter Self? Uh, of, co of course I am. It's, But there are limitations to Alter Self. There are, but Alter Self is not quite an illusion, is it? It's an, a physical transformation. Yes, I'm. I'm aware of what alter self is, but I, what's what's tagging me up is the mechanism by which you just trigger this within yourself. It's just a a willful change of of Correct. your. Hmm. I've never studied what makes me do it. I just know that I can. Well, we are going to change that. <laughs> we are definitely going to change that. I. We knew that was coming. Yeah. So as long right, as it doesn't get away in the quest and missions and everything. If a piece of you is removed, does it stay as it is, or is it does it revert back to an original? Is there an original form? I do have an original form. Would you like to see it? Yes. Yes. And Mina shifts in front of you. She's very pale. She's about five six. White hair, almost no features. Um, like Rorschach. Very pale gray eyes, but that's what she looks like. Oh, that is remarkable! Wow. Do you... so, if you were to say, cut your hair in one of your forms, or lose a, a limb or a finger, would that finger or limb or hair stay as the transformed version or would re re revert back to how it was now? I've um, never lost a finger and I haven't spent a lot of time with other changelings who have, so I don't really know and I'm not really willing to find out right now. Um, That's Edgar I don't... his butcher's knife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't often have to cut my hair. I just... It just is. I if I like to shift into another person with shorter hair, it'll be shorter hair. I would like to run tests at some point. Oh, of course. We'll see, I, you will get my permission before you do anything to me. Absolutely. This will be above board. All right then I will submit to testing because I am curious as well. This is incredible. And if you're if you're wondering, no, I can't become an animal. I can't sprout wings. I have to stay like that. I've tried. It doesn't. Come. So are, you're limited to your muscular or your skeletal I'm, structure. I'm limited to my basic organization. So I must have my legs, my arms and my head. But can you rearrange their positions? Can you rearrange organs? 
No. Huh. I can simply look different. Name a race, I can look like it. I can't be a centaur. Well, no, that would break the rules of limb organization. Correct. So it's starting to get later into the evening now for this conversation. <laughs> Mina just puts up with all the questions. It's like it's like a toddler just asking <laughs> that I mean, you think you've answered their question and they just there's another one and another one and I another fully, one. Fully expected that. <laughs> Hawk answers like the occasional question to him, but he's he casts speak with animals and he's just chatting with Artie. <laughs> I'm kind of just letting Edgar lead the questioning. I'm I'm the guy at the party that like I don't want to talk with any of you, so I'm gonna go talk to the cat <laughs> or the dog or whatever pet is available. Yep. That's not a bad way to be. No, <laughs> that's how I am in real life. <laughs> Same. Same. Yep. So right. uh, if, if there's no other pressing questions uh, this evening, we will go ahead and allow a long rest to occur overnight. Oh, Edgar's not going to sleep after that. <laughs> uh, Edgar will wake up in a pile of notes that he remembers writing a th- about three quarters of. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and, and about a third of them actually are in common. Or a language <laughs> you speak. The rest are just gibberish that you wrote in your sleep. <laughs> abyssal. I do speak abyssal. That's I know you. Oh, I know you do. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So the morning has dawned, or at least as best you can tell, because once again, the morning here in Icewind Dale is darker than you are used to. You can already hear the wind biting at the shutters outside your window. Uh, it looks to be yet another cold, dark day in Icewind Dale. Darn it. Again. Shocking. Yeah. Alright. So, I remember we are probably heading to Bryn Shander in yes. search for copper. Right. To give uh, the town halls and time to forget we exist. <laughs> in easy terms just sharing the uh, Ooh, I'm maps of the people as soon as I drink that the only thing I don't like that I, is that I have to keep reopening my notes and everything and bubbling them All right. there we go uh, it has nothing to do with you it's just oh. how this program works like yeah, if it if it Saved like the layout of the window, the, the windows, and everything in Fantasy Grounds. That'd be amazing. Yeah, it does in between. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> mine does, but I don't open that many. So Where you are this? all in East Haven right now. Um, I've just opened up the the Ten Towns map for the guys to see. Uh, is there anything else in in East Haven you would like to do? Head over to your uh, next destination. Um, um, flavor-wise, I want to go get more arrows and just restock and everything like that. Sure. Um, so that'll, uh, for 20 arrows, right? Uh, 23, technically. I was down three. That'll, I want to get 40 total. And I'll run you silver. Oh, no. <laughs> can I um, afford it? I can. I would like to stock up on my healer's kit or refresh it. Uh, I used to two uses of the ten, so... Sure, uh, that's a... more expensive. Let me... Did you heal it? I feel like they're 50, but I'm not positive. I feel like you are. <laughs> oh, the healer's... No, 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 healer's, uh, a healing potion is 50. Uh, five gold for a, uh, healer's oh. kit. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, no, probably no. one gold for two charges or somewhere around there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, I would also, there's a, a post office of some sort, or a place, where, a, a courier service, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, I almost forgot to do this. I need to send a letter to my father. Sure. Uh, what? 
would you like the is it something that you'd like the rest of the party to know or do you want to just send me a private message for what it says uh it doesn't contain anything that's going to be a secret to them so okay. uh it's just uh dearest father i have arrived in east haven currently scouting locations for the business <laughs> will write you when i have updates and I will send it, and that should buy me some time. All right. And <laughs> <laughs> so you are in Icewind Dale right now. And that, so that'll cost you f five gold to send that letter. Five gold. And uh, how much do I have? Why am I right. checking my notes? <laughs> Actually, I could tell you. Well, there goes that plus the uh, <laughs> healer's kit brings me down to three or two gold. Yep. How do you have I'm so a broke boy. What? Uh, actually, yeah, did not um, did your contact we give you guys some... each some money? Oh. Uh, the amount was not specified. That's true. Oh, that's right. Uh, Sean just swept it off the table without actually asking about it. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so as you look inside, there is 400 gold. 400 gold. Okay, so... 100 each. I have 102 gold. <laughs> I have 306. You could send 20 letters. So just to let you guys know, know as well, we are moving into the next phase of this adventure. It's going to start to get a little bit more dangerous, and... Uh, Darker, as Yay. you can see. But one of the changes that is going to be made is that every once in a while you're going to see a dice roll behind the scenes. Uh, I believe you see it as a shadow on the chat box. Sometimes that's just going to be me checking on random encounters and things like that and random things. Sometimes it's going to be me doing saving throws for the players without them knowing. Mm. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I do so, not. So every, every time you hear a, a player cry, you know that a dice has rolled. <laughs> and luckily, thank you, Fantasy Grounds, I have this beautiful ability on the party sheet to roll whatever I want. You know what? Whatever I, want. I ain't scared. <laughs> That so you are in them. East Haven currently. You guys have done a little bit of your errands. Uh, do you recall where you are headed next? Brinchander? Brinchander. So from looking at your maps and uh, just knowing the area well enough, you know that it's going to be about seven and a half hours journey along the east oh. way to get from East Haven to Brinchander in good conditions. Which there are none here. <laughs> well, I, when I say good conditions, I mean relative to Icewind Dale in the current moment. Oh. No, if it wasn't for the Everlasting Rhyme, it would probably only take about f five hours. Ah, it's not bad. So, uh, so yeah, seven and a half hours along the trail. Uh, and how do you in there? <clears throat> That's a hawk question if I ever heard yeah, it. I was <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not the group GPS. <laughs> um, we can rent, we can probably rent some uh, dogs and sleds again, but at the risk of losing them and it being a one-way trip. Um, thus probably costing more, or we can just walk, camp out when need be. I, I mean, can guide us. But out of town, I can be taller and I can carry um, Edgar. <laughs> Not really how those mechanics uh, work, but okay. <laughs> well, I don't mean I can be a taller dwarf. I mean, I can just be a taller person. Well, no, I'm just saying that height has nothing to do with carrying capacity score. I have a good strength. Thank you. My strength is my friends. <laughs> so you guys going to head out on foot then? My strength and my intelligence are my two best friends right now. So, <laughs> yes, uh, I think on foot will be the way. All right. Yes. Excellent. So you start heading out.
and uh, you immediately notice that the, the road is fairly well deserted. Um, as you walk out of the town, um, some of the guards just kind of give you that look like, yep, all right, that's what you want to do? Cool, have fun with that. Um, and they kind of bundle down closer to their their uh, their guardhouse and, and try to stay warm as they are freezing out here. Uh, and you begin along the road. Um, I'm just... It's here. So you set out, and uh, you start out at about midday at this point. Um, and the journey is fairly boring. You you kind of get highway hypnosis because it's all the same. Uh, no matter where you look, it is just white snow everywhere. And there is just a, a, a blizzard starting to form. And the winds start to pick up, and the snow starts to get denser and denser and denser. I pull out three uh, lengths of rope to give to the three party members to kind of <clears throat> have a system of sticking together. Very clever. Uh, and as you and the lead hawk, can I please get a survival check without your normal advantage? Without. Oh, got it. Okay. Oh, God, it's magic snow. survival. Yes, please. <laughs> this should go well. Yeah. Double digits. All right. So you start moving, and uh, you. There's a couple of times that you start to kind of wander and you feel your feet sinking into the snow a bit deeper than you think you should, and you realize that that must mean you're off the road, so you redirect yourselves. And. You keep moving through the snow. Is there anything you guys would like to do as you are moving through this blizzard now? And it is miserable. Just the cold wind is biting through you. You have a visibility of about 10 feet. Um, um, if that... Would my Chewinga, that is somehow still with me, um, <laughs> be reacting to this at all? Or... Uh, yeah, so you, you, you kind of, like, check under your, your, your cloak, and uh, the, the Chewinga, like, feels the icy wind and actually pulls itself out of your hood and kind of sits on your shoulder and just enjoys <laughs> the wind and the cold. I kind of just go, hey! <laughs> yeah, it's, Why do you have that thing? It, it is the only one of the five of you that is enjoying what's going on. Uh, how am I doing with the boots? Uh, you're you're doing fine. You're I mean you're moving through the snow just like the the rest of them. It's it's not a matter of difficult terrain that's holding you back. Like it's not the snow's depth that's doing it. It's literally the wind buffeting you all that's pushing back on you, that's slowing you down a bit. It's just making it harder to go forward. And sorry, the random encounter that just uh role that I'm about to describe uh, caught me off guard. Um, uh, that's a... <laughs> Same theory. So, if it caught the DM off guard, we're fucked. Well, I... <laughs> it's it's a D20 chart. Uh, Rob. Yo. Uh, I just want to mention that um, my background is Outlander. Okay. Which means I have an excellent memory for maps and geography and can always recall the general layout, terrain, settlements, and other features around you. Yep. In addition, so, I can find food, fresh water. Nice. So, so yeah, you do feel very confident that you are still heading in the correct direction. Okay. Um, you do not feel you do not feel you do not feel like you have uh, I want donuts. <laughs> you do not feel like you have gotten <laughs> lost. Um, and as you move through the snow, however. You see, uh, let me uh, drop you guys on 
map for. Oh, good. Visualize this better. Mm. And I'm gonna let you guys. Uh, so we, you are heading towards the top left of this battle map that I'm about to drop you on. So please arrange yourselves as such. Ooh, snow. <laughs> lots and lots of snow. Well, I sure is fucking in the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I literally just uh, dragged the tokens on. Oh, let me uh, unlock those tokens. The newest no, I, update I, I, of Fantasy Grounds has defaulted uh, defaulted to locking tokens every time I open up a map. Ooh, uh, I can feel that, so you that are, cold air. So you're headed in that direction. Rob, something to look into for the future. In the party sheet, we have marching in formation. Yeah, I've played with it in the past. In. It, has not, um, it has not been friendly to me in the past. I need to look at it again. Okay. Because that might make things easier in the future. For plopping us in. Yep. Uh, are we doing a Baldur's Gate style, me in the front of the three f flanking in the back? <laughs> That's up to you. The diamond. That's up to the four of you. Yeah. I mean, if we have the rope. Because we're holding on to the rope, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. But do you have a rope? So, as you are moving through the snow, the first thing you notice is your, your foot, once again, settles deeper into the snow than you're used to. But, I mean, the, the snow has been drifting a bunch, so you're like, okay, yep, that's fine. Let me, let me take another couple of steps and see what's going on. And you start to walk uphill a bit. Hmm. And... you see something sticking out of the snow about 20 feet in front of you. What is it? Slightly higher than you. Uh, it's hard to tell from where you are. A good visibility here is about 10 feet out. So Can it's I... Right here. Could I send the Chewinga to go investigate? <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking you're so... saying Chihuahua. The so, chihuahua. So you, you turn to your shoulder and you you kind of like point over there to and the chewingo looks at you. Makes its head. <laughs> oh. oh check it out. Oh, okay. He just likes the cold, he doesn't want to walk in the snow. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. So you say that and he just makes his head again. Yeah, I'll I'll go up and take a look at it. Are you gonna Careful still be attached not. to the rope or are you gonna let go of the rope for the time being? Uh, I uh ideally bring you three with me, but all right, let's go. Follow him. All right. None of us need to be alone in this. We do not. So as you get closer and you get to within about ten feet of this thing, you see that it is a desiccated corpse sitting in the snow. <laughs> sitting okay. upright and it's buried to about its uh, rib cage in snow and its head's kind of lolling off to one side. Looks like the guy from Fargo. <laughs> uh, can I take a look at the body and see if I can I don't know, do a quick scan see if there's any anything that it looks like it died of other than Sure, so you're going you're gonna to go up to the, uh, the body? I was um, going to gesture around like, um... <laughs> I'll take Maybe a couple not. steps forward, but uh, I'm connected by rope to Hawk, so I'm I won't get very far without him coming. Me with yanking me. you back. Uh, uh, there, there's, I mean, like you. you guys are not tied tight to each other. You probably have like five or six feet of rope between. Um, otherwise, I was it picturing would us on. like being kids on leashes and Hawk is our parent. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, For your safety. Ed Edgar's wearing the monkey backpack one, so that it looks like the monkey's holding yeah. onto his back. Yes. Um, I'm going to get ready to pull him back, even if it just gets him a couple feet away from the thing. If sure, anything hap anything moves that is not of his person. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So you you kind of sneak forward a little bit, and you get within about five feet of this thing. Uh, grow me a medicine check. 
Ooh, I can do that. I can do that. No, I can't. So, uh, it is, you can't tell how it died. Uh, however, whatever this thing died, uh, you can tell that um, it's definitely been out here in the cold for a long time. Um, it's it it's almost freeze dried. Uh, it is a it appears to be uh, a human, um, from what you can tell. But I mean, like humans, elves, desiccated corpses, they kind of look the same. Um, but it's definitely one of the more humanoid of the of the the races. Um, so either half elf, elf. And something like that. Um, you do notice Ten. that uh, it has uh, robes on. Okay, uh, I'm gonna call over the the wind as I start heading back towards them. I don't think it's anything we need to be concerned about. Uh, and as Edgar like says just, that, I need everyone up. to roll me a dexterity saving throw. As the ground shakes under all of you, nice natural twenty, Hawk. And you're the only one. Yep. How do you so, roll it as a save? Sorry. Uh, as a save, it's the Use little... Use the save side. Oh, gosh. Thank you. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, the ground shakes under your feet. And all realize at this point that you are actually... Um, standing on top of something. Oh. And the snow also. starts to cascade yeah. off of this. And, uh, Hawk, give me a strength saving throw. Because you are holding okay. on to this rope. So as well, you're it was an 18, but all right. But, I know, I, I saw it kind of teeter. Uh, Mine was a 15 before. Cox dice still, uh, still exist in virtual. Um, Hawk, yep. you're just holding on to the rope, or are you tied to it? I'm just holding on to it. You're just holding on to it, okay. So as the avalanche of snow starts to break away, you see white scales start to surface <gasps> underneath the snow. And Mona, Edgar, and Mina, you fall, and you slide down, and you feel this leathery form underneath as you realize you're sliding mm -hmm. underneath the wing, or on top, sorry, on top of the wing of a massive dragon that is unearthing <laughs> itself from this snow. <laughs> its wings spreading wide and throwing you all prone. Hawk, you managed to keep your feet. You are able to, uh, with a natural 20, I'm going to give you the option if you would like, as you're realizing, you can go right. ahead and uh, you can grab hold of something, or you can go ahead and jump off of it. It is your choice. Um, that corpse that you saw is actually attached to a saddle mounted just at the base of the neck of this massive dragon. Uh, so, Hawk, what are you going to... Oh, I just dragged you off. Sorry. What color is it, is it? You're fine. Is it a riding saddle? Yeehaw. It is a riding saddle, yes. Oh, I'm going to make my way to the riding saddle. Uh, the corpse is in there. Um but you're going to see not for long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this, you make your way over to a it. a white you, dragon? And you grab hold of it. It is a white dragon. Yes. Okay. And so the wind is buffeting all of you as you, uh, as you are fallen to the snow. The three of you are thrown in the snow and snow starts to pull down off of the back of this massive beast, bury you in. Hawk, you grab hold of the saddle. Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to try to toss out the skeleton and sit in it. <laughs> All right. So as you reach down and you grab for the saddle, I need another dexterity saving. Oh, goody. <laughs> okay. As soon as you're nice. As soon as your hand comes in contact with this corpse, the dragon flies into a raid and it roars <sighs> a deafening roar. And it tries to shake you off its back, but you manage to kind of hook your arm into the saddle and you undo the clasp enough and the, skele uh, the skeletal form tumbles off the back. And uh, I'm going to say, for comedy's sake, lands next to Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar's done paying attention to the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and you manage to seat yourself into this saddle as the dragon starts to whip around 
and starts to through the snow. Uh, it, its wings are beating, but the wind is buffeting against it and uh, unable to take flight. And I need everyone. I ain't fighting a dragon. We're gonna fight this thing? I never said that. I said roll initiative. We, we, the, the, I wish I had behind me like the, the nine rules of D&D. <laughs> One of them is you can always run away. Yes. Getting in the saddle is not running away. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's safer than down I, there. I, I am going to uh, state that that is correct. Uh, uh, While true, it's safer than down there. At least for the time being. Sorry, I just need to do this. this Is that way, the so dragon's that... name? Arvidarachi. And I know, right? It's like Arvidarachi. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon uh, talks uh, like this. Another token is going to. Okay, good. The second token did. The way that I put things in the combat tracker, there was a chance that a second token was going to appear on the screen, and I didn't want you guys to cry. <laughs> the dragon's twin. All right. Uh, uh, so luckily for you, you all get to go first. Edgar, what would you like to do? I G -G am going to yell to Hawk. Hawk! Get off of that dragon! <laughs> Did they see me get on the dragon? Uh, I mean, I roll me a perception check, Edgar, because it is blizzard conditions. But you do know that he's not next to you. And you're not all, you're not like completely submerged in the snow yet. Perception, <laughs> that is not a strong suit of Edgar's. Um, <laughs> you know that he's not next to you and you see a form moving and you do see the rider that was in that saddle. Now, like, if your face is here, its face is like right here. Hawk, what are you doing? Jump down off of the dragon. You're only I... making it more angry. I'm just going to say, improvising! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That's never worked for us. Uh. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do other than scream and, I assume, cry? I'm sure as hell not going to hit it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am going to hide behind the corpse if I can. Give me a stealth check. <laughs> With advantage, because it is a blizzard. Nice. <laughs> Quick thinking saves the day. Maybe. All right, 18. Very nice. All right, noted. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. All right, Mona, you are up. You are Edgar. facing a gargantuan white dragon. Greg, I I'm so sorry. This is this was my first instinct, and I'm gonna go with it. Um, I misty step over to Edgar um, because I think that the corpse is attacking him because of the <laughs> blizzard, and I yank him out of the snow and I put him next to me. <laughs> can I like fight her to stay underneath the corpse? Uh, yes, you can. Can I get a strength check from Mona and I'm a dexterity about... check from or or so? Athletics check for Mona and either athletics or acrobatics <laughs> from Edgar. I'm worried about my <laughs> tiny boy. <laughs> no, leave me in here. No. <laughs> uh, so, Mona, you reach down and you grab hold of him and you start to pull. And he just worms his way out of your grasp. And he, like, disappears almost into the rib cage of this skeleton now. Edgar, no! I'm going to poke, I'm gonna poke my head out and say, there's only room for one of us in here, and then shut the robe over my head. <laughs> <laughs> I need a drawing of that. <laughs> I was going to say, this is when I wish we had enough followers to get fan art, so Sean, uh, you're going to have to get your boyfriend on that. <laughs> He's listening. Oh, he is watching right now. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Chris, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to request that. Just <laughs> and you're poking out from robes in a skeletal form. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, <laughs> that that's Mona's turn. Uh, that's Hawk. my turn. You are in uh, the so... saddle on <laughs> a gargantuan white dragon at level four. What would you like to do? I mentioned that yeah. last part for no reason. 
Oh, I know. No reason. Um, no reason whatsoever. So it, it knows I'm on top of it. Oh, it very much knows. Okay. I'm going to try to leap off into the biggest pile of snow I can see and, like, use gravity to bury myself. Sure, give me an acrobatics check. Um, while also... Uh, no, never mind. Oh, I have the boots of false tracks on. I didn't realize that. Forgot about that. <laughs> That's um, right, I forgot I gave you those. Right, even though I don't really leave footprints in the snow. The, um... Just read, read Chris's response. <laughs> oh, what am I drawing? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to leap off into the snow and do that. So you said deck save? Uh, uh, acrobatics check. Acrobatics check. Got it. See how this goes. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so 13. So you, you, you pull yourself out of the saddle thinking to yourself, all right, maybe not best my plan. And you just kind of like slide skate down the scales of this dragon and leap and give me a stealth check to see if you successfully get under. And I will give you this one at advantage because of your um, favorite. Sorry, what check was it? Uh, a stealth. Stealth check, got it. Uh, okay, advantage. And I'm also a wood elf. Which I can attempt to hide even when I'm only lightly obscured. Got it. Uh, you, this is a blizzard, and you're jumping into a snowbank, so I'm gonna. Yeah, you can definitely try to hide. Ooh, double ones. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so apparently, fates want you to be eaten by a white dragon. Yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah. That is Hawk's turn. You think you are very well hidden underneath this snowbank, <laughs> which consists of four snowflakes. Mina, you're up. Uh, Mina's gonna, now that her secret is out, she's gonna shift into a white dragonborn. <laughs> Interesting. And also try and hide a little bit. All right. <laughs> I, I feel like this is one of those fear reactions. I don't speak yeah. draconic. So I feel that... like this is one of those fear reactions that some animals have. They just like yeah, just... It, <laughs> fear shift into your... <laughs> <laughs> the white dragonborn is the only one that makes sense right yep. now. Uh, roll me a stealth check uh, with advantage because you are now uh, you're, you're uh, white scales. So it looks kind of like dent. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Where's the advantage? There it is. And stealth. Ooh. 19. All right. So you feel like you are uh, quite well hidden. It is now the dragon's Ew. turn. Oh, I forgot that it gets a turn. <laughs> you forgot that it gets a turn. <laughs> I was like, back to Edgar. <laughs> so the dragon pulls itself out of the snow and whips its, itself around, and it is now completely free and clear of this of the snow and just standing there and it spins towards all of you and growls where am no. i by the way because on the map i'm still technically on the dragon you're under him her okay yeah <laughs> and i need everyone <laughs> give no. me a wisdom saving Oh. Is this against being frightened? It is against being frightened. I have advantage. Uh, just saying, any checks like this and saves, you can willingly fail, Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to. <laughs> just putting it out there. Hey! Alright. Uh, so, Mina nice and one. Mona. No. You are both frightened. I don't blame you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh... Ice scary cream. dragon. And it freezes. It and just... that's unpleasant. <laughs> Stop that. Why is it not letting me do this? It doesn't want us to be frightened, Rob. I have other means. 
Well, I was dragging it from the dragon onto you, and it's popping up the error log, so I'm just going to drag it from the key. And I'm frightened. How am I frightened by a Rivadirchi? <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you like to see how you're frightened by... No. By Arvietres? I, I can't pronounce it. Arvietres. Let's just say it. Arvietres. Arvietrache. <laughs> Ar Ar Arveat Arveatras. Yeah. I, Arriva to Derchi. Arriva Derchi. By the dragon. Uh, yeah, by the white dragon. I'm scared. It yeah. roars and shakes you all to the core as it I roars. pee a little. <laughs> and it slams its claws down on either side of you, Edgar. Hiding inside the corpse. Maybe that's not the best place to be. And as you sit inside of it, shuddering, you feel a presence above you. And as you peek out through the gaps in the rib cage, you see the giant maw of an ancient white dragon lowering toward you. No. Its mouth open. And it very gingerly up and pulls. <laughs> oh no. Lifting. Do you try to stay inside it? If you feel it. I, try I tried to help you. <laughs> well, I know that in while I'm currently inside this skeleton, or this skeleton. I I'm not also. I don't know if I'm big enough to hide in the rib cage. I, I was like, which I'm no, no, like you're not like completely inside the rib cage. No, you're no, like, I'm, I'm like behind the back, like between the robes and the back. Sure. With my head so, like tucked so under it's, the arm. It's holding onto the corpse. Are you holding onto the corpse as well to ride up on it? Or are you going to let him uncover or the uh, dragon uncover? I. You best let that thing uncover you. That you didn't think this question was coming to you tonight, did you? <laughs> Do you if, remain if the rigid? dragon uncovers me, bad things will happen to me. If the dragon doesn't <laughs> uncover you. me, maybe I can ride it out. It's not going to eat me, I don't think. You don't think. You, you literally just told me two rounds ago not to ride it out. <laughs> what are you going to do? Quick quick. quick, 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 like a bunny. I'm staying. Everyone, everyone's everyone's a slave give me a strength, give me a strength check to hold on to the uh, corpse. <laughs> All right. What an odd set of circumstances. Oh, oh wait, no. that's a saving throw. Uh, is your strength check any different from your saving throw? Minus one? Probably not. No. <laughs> it doesn't matter then. <laughs> so you, you grab hold of it and you feel it start to lift. You're like, no, no. And you can't grab purchase because it's this icy slick form. Uh, uh, like all of the, all of the, the liquidy parts of this corpse are actually frozen now. And you slip free and fall back into the snowbank as it lifts free its corpse. And you watch as it arches its head back over its shoulder and moves around a little bit. And as it brings its head clear, you see that corpse is once again sitting in the saddle back. I don't like that. <laughs> and it turns back to you and roars again at all four. Edgar, you're... <laughs> okay, uh, looking at my friends and seeing that they're petrified. Um, well, Hawk's not. I'm fine. This is just a Tuesday for him. I... Edgar feels like if he's not as scared as the others, he, there's something he should be doing. And he's going to stand his ground during the roar, and he's going to say... We are sorry for disturbing your slumber, O oh great white worm. That's a choice. All right. <laughs> um, and we are sorry for re accidentally removing your rider from their saddle. We meant no disrespect. And he's trying very hard 
to keep a brave face. Noted. Are you doing anything else? Oh, halflings. <laughs> I am going to not do anything else. <laughs> All right. Mona, that oh, is you. I have you never seen. <laughs> frightened. I am. So, uh, you cannot willingly move closer to the dragon. Okay. Not gonna be a problem. Um, for you. Yeah, no, that was <laughs> that was quite the opposite of my plan. Um, I have never seen anything like this in my life. I'm very scared. Um, in fairness, going... not a single one of you have ever seen a white, an ancient white dragon. I am going to cast invisibility on myself. <laughs> <laughs> So we we have we have Mina casting or uh, shape shifting out of fear and Mona going invisible out of fear. We cast the Incredibles here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Am I doing this right? Uh you don't have to. Oh. I think it's just that. Okay. So you you uh, fade away into. Yes, I that do. Violet. We have Jack Jack. <laughs> uh is any so is anyone still holding on to the rope by the way i'm not uh, for sure not tied around us mm, no i thought we were holding it, it. yeah I, I i was an assumption that uh edgar tied it. himself to it so edgar you are tied to the rope and you're the only one tied to the rope <laughs> you guys <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, you're who's up. holding edgar your turn, Hawk. Uh, I'm just going to say, Edgar, get off the dragon! And then try to hide again. I'm not on the dragon, I'm on the ground! <laughs> you are on the ground? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. failed. He, he failed to hold on. He, oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, he plopped I'm back also down into the standing then I'm just going to in hide. between its paws, right? Uh, yes, you are, yeah. You're not standing, you're on your ass. <laughs> there we go. Nice. So you... You you just kind of burrow into the snow a bit and uh, start to stay still. Uh, Mina. Um. Hmm. Uh, no, Edgar, you're you're still where you were. Uh, the dragon is just uh, that's just his sphere of influence. Really, he's don't worry, he's that big. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's that big. Um. He's in the size category where they no longer tell me how many squares he takes up. <laughs> Just too oh, many. Wow. It's like so everything fun. has like a min and a max. Gargantuan's like, it's this and past. Yep. <laughs> However much past. Yep. Um, I don't feel like talking to it's going to help. Even though... Tell me a nature check if you want to confirm one way or the other. Yeah, I would like to do that, please. Uh, nature or... I'll give you Arcana because dragons are magical beasts, so I can swing that. That's equal. Either way, it's the same skill. Fair enough. Oops, I did not mean to roll it twice. So I knew they were one away from each other, so... Um, so the only thing you really know about white dragons, because uh, they're not something you deal with very often... Dragons no. in general are not super common in Faerun. Um, is that white dragons are the most bestial of them. The least intelligent, the most I'm gonna eat everything out of all of the dragons. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, yeah. This is not good. Hey, you are all smarter than it, though. <laughs> it's pretty good. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, you wouldn't know. <laughs> so. Wait, how did I roll that at disadvantage? Oh, because I'm afraid. That's why. Oh, yeah, yeah. So actually, that would have uh, accurate, but I still. Uh, my answer was. All right. Um.
I think I might. Mm. Can't hit it. Talking to it's not going to work. And I can't run in this shit. Not quickly, anyway. So talking is really the only option. <laughs> uh, we went from an art heist to a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd Welcome really to Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. <laughs> we've done both now. We've done Dungeons. We've done Dragons. Game day. Hey. <laughs> All right. So I'm just gonna stand up. I would just like to put record to this. This was one generate. <laughs> that almost makes it worse. <laughs> like... I. I won't lie, I actually considered I considered forcing you guys to do this one today because it entertained me. And I'm like, mm -hmm. nah, I'll leave this one till a later date. Ask and you shall receive <laughs> manifesting. Sorry, right, Sean, so continue. I'm just going to stand up and say, boy, dragon. <laughs> Does it look at me? Uh... Does it doesn't does it like fully reaction to the it doesn't fully it... turn its head, but it kind of like you can see its eye turn towards you. Does it have any reaction to the fact that a tiny little white dragon is talking to it? White dragon born. Oh, I forgot about that. Tiny uh, little white dragon born. Not, is that, talking to it. not that you can tell. Okay. Um, we're, um, we're gonna go. Uh, sorry to have bothered you. Uh, you are great and beautiful, and I will give you me a persuasion check at disadvantage. Fifty gold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any charisma. BT doves. No. It was at disadvantage anyway, so I either double disadvantage or <laughs> it just growls like such a low growl that you feel it in your chest. Right. Got it. And I and now take it is my a dragon. movement back up. All right. Go ahead. Do we have 30 feet in here? Uh, yeah, this map is huge. I think the dragon's 30 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't see squares on this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I did make that intentionally. Yeah, let me. I'm actually going to lock the tokens again so that uh, that way it'll measure it out for you. All right, so it is now the dragon's turn. Oh yeah. And <laughs> I like. How, I love how you keep forgetting that it gets a turn. I keep forgetting. I'm like, there's no way the dragon. Because <laughs> it's not in the combat there. tracker, so it's it's easy to forget. <laughs> it is in the combat track. Oh, it's not in the public oh, it's combat, not the tracker. combat tracker. Sorry, that's because of the how it's in the combat tracker. Oh, yeah, he helped me, all right. It's been in my combat tracker this whole time. <laughs> Wait, we get a combat tracker? It's the two cross swords in the top right part of your screen. Click on that, and it brings up a combat tracker. Oh, I oh what? I walked you through all of this the first game. Yes. Yeah, and that was a very long time ago. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so... <laughs> This dragon looks at you and it growls like feel it on all of your chest. You actually feel the ground shaking. Mm -hmm. And Edgar, you watch as from above you it actually steps away from you. Oh no. And walks towards Mona. Mona or Mina? Mina, Mona or Mina? God damn you both. 
Vex walks Vex. towards Mina. <laughs> All right. Well, great. <clears throat> and lowers his face down towards you and growls again. And a fog starts to lift up in the middle of this blizzard. Your vision goes from 10 feet to nothing. Can't see anything in front of you. Uh, and this affects Mona and Mina only. Mm. And I need the two of you to give me a dex uh, dexterity. Constitution saving throw, please. Mina, uh, so Mona, you kind of like nestle down into the snow and pull your cloak down over you a little bit, and you manage to to uh, to stave it off. You do feel this fog starts to bite into you as it's just freezing you. Mona, you don't manage to uh, react in time, and this cold from the fog just starts to bite into any exposed flesh you have, and you take. Which, to be fair, is not much. Eight points of cold damage. Alrighty. As you feel your skin, your scales right now, just crystallize. Oof. And then you hear thudding. Can't see anything. It seems to be receding. Edgar. Uh, Edgar lets out the breath that he's been holding since forever. Yep. And uh, can I even see as far as as um, Mina? You can see so interesting question. So uh, you can see the, the hulking shape of the dragon although you can't make out any details of it but as soon as you see about this far your vision just kind of stops in this obscured whiteness. Okay. Um, with with my eyes on, on the dragon, I'm going to make my way towards the, the group or the center mass of the group. Um, I'm guessing half speed because it's awful. Are, are, you, are you trying to sneak? No, no, okay. just keeping my so, eyes yeah, on So yeah, so it would be half speed because, as you said, it is. Okay, I only get about 20 feet. Yep. Um, and can I, like, make out a, like, the space where Mona would be? Like, uh, so as soon as you step up and... next to, or what you feel is next to Mona, your vision becomes zero. And I need a constitution saving throw. <laughs> okay, um, let me take a look. At my boots. Oh, I right. I don't know if they help. Uh, boots of the winter one. It's in a boot. Let's see here. So, uh, resistance against cold, ignore difficult effects. Oh, and... So you'll have resistance uh, against but this only, damage. But only to the damage. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't help me with the save. Um, uh, Constitution saving throw, though. Okay. So you are going to take half of this damage, which it might do automatically. Let's find out. You do ignore difficult terrain created by ice or snow. Huh. Yep. It does not. It did not do it automatically. So uh, you only take five of that damage. So modify your hit points according. As the uh, this cold bites into you. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to shake it off and steal myself, and I get to about here, and Mona! Mona! Edgar? Mona, and I'm gonna move my hand towards the space where I heard Mona's voice from. Uh, you find her. Uh, you bump into it, and it's weird, because as you bump into her, you're like, okay, I can see my hand. But I still can't see a Mona. 
<laughs> right, invisibility exists. And, and I'm going to, like, reach for, like, a hand or a wrist. And I, like, forget I'm invisible, so I'm like, Edgar, I'm right here. <laughs> I, I'm tempted to make you roll a dexterity check to see if you succeed in what you're aiming for, Edgar, but I'm not going. Oh, no, you're up. Uh, uh -huh. And I'm, I'm going to try to give, like, some reassurance to maybe help snap her out of the the frightened. Be careful what you're touching for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, <I'm>... there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Mona, you're up. That's I actually hit the um... back of her knee. <laughs> That's true, actually. You're pretty safe from him. <laughs> All right. Um, he inappropriately touches your calf. <laughs> I don't say anything. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to embarrass him. <laughs> All right. Um, ugh, I don't know what to do. Um, so I... So I'm still kind of shaken, you but I'm I happy to see you caught you off guard by throwing an ancient white dragon at you at level four? Oh, yeah, you know. Um, so I, can I send my raven to kind of just like see, because I hear the thudding. Can I send the sure. raven to see if it's retreating? Like what so is happening? So as you, as your raven starts to take wing, she f lifts off and spreads her wings and oh. is immediately buffeted by the blizzard <laughs> and gets slammed no. down into a snowbank. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, no. I can no, it's gonna be a soft landing because it's just a snowbag, so she's fine. Oh, okay, thank she's you. She's just buried in the snow. <laughs> um, but I'm very traumatized. You, you, seeing yeah, you this, get so, a um, very distinct sense of really. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That's the end of my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Hawk, you're up. I'm done. I'm out. Mm. Oh man. Do I get a vague idea of how big this? fog cloud is um yeah with your with your abilities i'll give you a perception check to see okay oh yeah <laughs> so uh where is the perfect box of the <laughs> since, you can see the ring since it's about there okay And I can see the dragon retreating, or at least walking. You cannot. You cannot see anything over there. Okay. It was in the circle of, of nothingness. Exactly. That's why you can't see it. Act. <laughs> okay. Um, so what you guys always wanted, an invisible ancient white, right? Uh, <laughs> hey, it's walking away. I'm fine with that. Yep, yep. It's yep. invisible. We can't see it. We can't. We can't be bothered by it. That's fine. Can't be scary anymore. Doesn't exist once it's out of our sight. However, <laughs> uh, okay. so uh, let me let me ask this question. That's going to simplify. Are you planning on doing anything that might be loud? No, if right. anything. So right we're going to go ahead and end initiative order at this point. Okay. And you can, guys, just kind of hunker down in the cold as this blizzard whips over you and you feel the thumping of this dragon seed into the distance towards the north. And after about 20 minutes, a half hour, it finally nestles down, or it, it stops, sorry, it finally the thudding subsides. And I need. A constitution saving throw, um, not from you, Hawk, and Edgar, you get advantage. Okay. So Mina and Mona, too? Yes. Oh, come on! <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Uh, so you guys are frozen to your core, but as you start to stand up after the noise has subsided, you find that it's just like a little bit of an ache. Uh, you do not gain a point of exhaustion from the blizzard conditions. And the blizzard actually starts to subside a little bit as you stand up and start to shake yourself out of this encounter. And uh, I I've got a little bit of a surprise for you guys, actually. Oh, goody. 
Uh, uh, good. You so just so first of all, we are about to take our break, which is going to be about a 10, 15 minute break. It might be a touch longer this evening, and here's why: you guys just survived one of the most deadly encounters in Icewind Dale. Congratulations, you are now level five. Yay! Yay! Oh. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I at the dragon, Sean. <laughs> was not expecting that at all. Oh, like it touched the survivor. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, it specifically says if you survive this encounter, you. Five. Oh, dang. Uh, My passive perception is 24. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and all that, it took we're was gonna go ahead scared shitless. And we're going to take our break. We will be back in about 10. So, about uh, 10. Of... Wait, it's... you get a positive passive. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're on.
And we are back. Welcome back. Uh, we just finished, I would say, fighting, but really that didn't happen. Running away from <laughs> a ancient white dragon before the break, and our players were able to level up to level five, and uh, we're most of the way there, so good enough for government work. So the blizzard has died down a bit at this point and turned back into just the normal, miserable snowstorm. You do realize, Hawk, as soon as your visibility increases, that you see the road. Uh, it's probably about a half mile south of you. You do seem to have gotten off trail just a bit during that blizzard. Um, I would say not devastatingly so, but, I mean, it did make you step on a track, so... Uh, did you have any other points of order that you'd like to do, or are you just going to keep trekking on over towards uh, Bryn Shander? I did are have we... one question. Did someone say they have alarm? Yes. Okay. I'm going to change my spell choice here. Uh -uh. <laughs> Is anybody okay? Does anybody need any healing? Any help? Is... Is the rest of the journey going to be like that? Probably. As okay. Mina shifts um, back to Mina, as opposed to a white dragonborn. Not too many uh, <laughs> and, uh, dragon sightings are rare up here. Though, as you see, not impossible. So we're either very lucky, or we got our one out of our system, and now we're done? I think it's a combination of very unlucky and very lucky. I will take it. Out of curiosity, <laughs> did did we happen to put together that there was a dragon and the snow got worse? I think the snow got worse and then we stepped on the dragon. Right. Because the snow was worse around the dragon. I felt I, I, I felt this burning chill almost when it got close to us. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think um, we did that to us when the fog happened. Can I make a check to remember things about dragons? Sure. Uh, what type of stuff are you trying to learn or remember? Uh, what sort of effects a white dragon would have on its environment? Arcana, please. All right. I can't drag that off of Fantasy Grounds. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go with this. You can um, drag it off of Fantasy Grounds. You can't drag it off of D&D &D Beyond, which I believe is what you meant. Sure did. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, oh, my chat is that's covered. pretty good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you do know that uh, dragons are... Um... You don't answer now. That dragons are very powerful, magical beings. Uh, you have never heard of any of them being able to control weather, however. Uh, to a great extent. Um, so it seems unlikely that the dragon caused. The okay. And it wouldn't have been doing it, say, passively. There's nothing that it could have. Uh, you've never heard of that before. That being a thing. Well, I know that dragons are powerful spellcasters, but I mean, usually it's the different colors of dragons that are more crafty with their spells. I mean, white dragons are more predatorial. They're, they're all about the hunt. Do you think it's going to come back? I think that... I think we don't stick around to find out. Yes. And, right. if, <laughs> and if it wanted to kill us, it either would have or it will as Ed there's not much we can do about it. As and Edgar so is... I say we just keep going. As Edgar is talking and trying to reassure me, I'm kind of like starting to like start walking to kind of <laughs> encourage him to like pick his feet up a little bit. Ed Edgar goes into a five minute soliloquy about uh, <laughs> about why you should be grateful that the dragon didn't kill you and then turns around and the party's gone. <laughs> Probably more the futility of our actions and how it's what's going to happen to us is going to happen to us, and there's not much we can do about it. But still, five that is a is that accurate. is a that is a great way to look at this campaign. So moving oh. on, 
I was going to say, I'd love to stay in chat, but can we walk in chat? <laughs> Ideally. I don't know. Did someone tug the rope I'm connected to? <laughs> <laughs> so, Edgar, uh, interesting as you say that, <laughs> as you start walking with the uh, away, you do feel a tug, and like the majority of the rope is now buried under a bunch of snow, so like you have to pull it out from there, and now you're dragging about 30 feet of rope behind you. There's no map, by the way, on the live stream. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I okay. have the... Uh, yeah, the awesome logo. Up. Cool. Whoa. Well, we made it halfway. That's nice. I'm I, I realize I told you you were north of it, but uh, I'm restricted to where I can drop this down because of the grid, and it was. So, as you uh, keep making your way along the road, the, the blizzard has died down at this point. You do notice that it is dark again, so you have made it past the point in the day where you have your two hours of, uh, of dusk, and you are back into twilight and uh, beyond. So it's hard to tell exactly what time of day it is, but you trudge along, and you make your way, and you finally see in the distance a, a massive structure start to form in front of you. Uh, it is sitting on top of a wind-lashed hill. You see a walled town perched up there. There's just massive wooden walls surrounding the entirety of it. Um, but yeah. You see the road winds up to a gate. Thank goodness. So as you, I assume you approach the town. I would like to approach the town. <laughs> <laughs> so as you approach the town and start winding your way up the road, you do notice the gate is closed. You know, I spaced for a second. This is not Bryn Shander, right? This is Bryn Shander. Oh, it is. Okay. Is well, yeah, of course we want to go in. Is there anybody in front of the gate, like guards? There's no one in front of the gate, but uh, as you look up on top of the wall, you do see a few figures standing up on the ramparts. Mm. Uh, hello? Eh. Could you let us in? It's, it's after dark. Yes, that's why precisely why we want to get in. Gate doesn't open <laughs> after dark. I mean, it could. <laughs> No, don't think it could. Is, is there it perhaps not functionally a... capable of opening? What do you say? Is it functionally? Nah, it looks like it's broken over here. Anytime it's dark, it's weird. Damnedest thing. Gate breaks. Doesn't open. Is there by any chance a... a repairman who could be persuaded to come and fix it in the next handful of minutes for, say, five gold? A persuasion check. The Prince Ender Gate is the McDonald's ice cream machine of this <laughs> game. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, once it's nighttime. <laughs> uh, I will be using Halfling Luck to reroll that. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Can... <laughs> Wait, Halfling Luck? Oh, hey, it only applies one. to ones. It only, only applies to ones. Right? One. I thought it was ones or twos. Check it. I don't actually. Up my head. Not normally. I don't play. I don't play short classes. Races. Uh, features and traits. That's uh, racial traits. Let's see. Um, lucky. Oh, it's just a one. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you do have an inspiration. Sorry. I will use the inspiration then. Because I don't want to be in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna let you use it on this, but I am gonna give you inspiration for that double. <laughs> so, All right, what uh, my looks down at you. Ah, uh, five gold. Uh, repairman cost a might bit more than that. I'd say probably closer to. What do you think? Yeah, fifty gold. All right, fuck your repairman. Let's go. Have a good night. Stay warm. 
Fuck you. <laughs> What's the matter, you? I so I have in my possession a magical item that I it's one of my infusions. It's called a mystery key. It has a five percent chance of unlocking any lock into which it's inserted. I mean, hey. Is it, is it the gates that are locked or they're prevented from being opened? <sighs> All right. So by the rules, they are barred shut. But that's really clever. Edgar, walk up to the gate and take out your key and you put it up against the, the gate. And it kind of like elongates between the slots and the gate. <laughs> and you feel a grinding as the bar behind <laughs> slips free of its its holdings and the gate kind of swings open a little. I didn't even have to roll for that. It's like a 5% chance. Oh, yeah, I'm being nice. Hell yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of these dice and it keeps making more of them. Uh, <laughs> just roll is, this, is this door, like, is it like a huge, like, city door? Yes, it is a massive is it... city door, yeah. Uh, so I, I just kind of... <laughs> no, go carry. No, I was just going to say, I turned, I look at you and I'm like, how, how did you do that? <laughs> I'm just like folding it back in on itself. So, um, well, I believe they owe me 50 gold because I repaired their gates. You said the running, the running rate for a repair man was 50 gold, correct? Do you say that to the guard up above? I'm feeling bold and a little bit upset about the... I'm, I'm emboldened by surviving spice. a dragon and Jesus. annoyed by trudging through the snow. So spice. I'm going to be snarky and say, Oi, you breaking into the city? No. You hear you are footsteps coming down and out of the, uh, the guardhouse on either side, four <laughs> guards come up and they have their weapons drawn and they approach... We don't happen to have the newspaper from the previous town, do we? I don't think so. Somebody did, but I don't. Um, well, you told me that your gate was broken, and being a good Samaritan, I fixed it for you. Being a good Samaritan, you broke into the city of Bryn Shanda after hours. <sighs> Didn't want to have to do this, but two of them walk over to you and grab you under the arms. Hey, I, to be fair, you didn't say it was closed. You said the gate was broken. You did not say the city was closed. So he fixed your gate. Is that yes. the way you want to play it, dwarf? Um, I have really shitty charisma. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd really like to scare the piss out of him. <laughs> um, now let's not be rash here gentlemen I, first of all please do not jostle me too much I, I'm carrying a assortment of unstable and volatile chemicals don't uh, mm -hmm. oh you're coming into Bryn Shander with dangerous chemicals now no ah. I said unstable and volatile please don't jostle them the same way a torch is safe when held, but if you throw it, willy-nilly... Oh, you're going to throw a torch <laughs> now, are you? I think you need up. to sit in the cell overnight. You're under arrest, sir. And right, they are going to attempt to lift you up. As they attempt to pick me up, can I do a sleight of hand to knock over something in my, in my, uh, my bag? What? I mean, yes, <laughs> but what? <laughs> uh, I have a spell that I would like to cast, but I would like to make it seem as if it's because they are jostling me. Okay. Go for it, and I don't think this is going to help you. I would like to cast web. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll me that... Uh... In sleight of hand, something I'm good at. Maybe. Probably not. 
Most likely not. <laughs> uh, I'm not bad, though. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Hand slighted. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on what the uh, DC on that was. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna uh, to... Sorry, I'm reading exactly how web works. So. Cool. So you guys watch as this web-like goo explodes out from around Edgar, around him in all directions, hitting the two guard posts on either side. And can I get everyone to give me a dexterity saving throw? Including oh you, God. Edgar. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, no. And what's your spell save DC, um, Edgar? Uh, it just went up, so let's find out together. Um, <laughs> 15, uh, I think. Okay. It, well, it's not high. It's probably in fantasy. It's based on your actually. intelligence, right? It's based on my intelligence, but we're very low levels. It's um, what's your uh, intelligence? safety C of 14. 14, noted. Three, Only for the guards. 11, 12, yeah, 14, yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna try and sell it a little bit more by as they're grabbing right before the web goes up. I'm gonna go. Oh, careful! No, no, don't, don't push that. All right. So, Mona, you are completely restrained by this web as it wraps around you. Uh, Edgar, you're fine. Hawk, you're fine. Mina, yeah, you're fine. And one of the guards, feet away, apparently. I'm going to give it a 50% chance that it's one of the ones holding you. Hi. Hi. All right. So uh, the two guards that are holding you get wrapped up in this web and you plop down on the ground. And one of the other guards is still free and he just looks around. Oh, 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 what happened here? What? Are you attacking us? No, you jostled my... That seems like an attack to me. Roll me a persuasion check. Oh my god, these are fools. Edgar, I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> okay, persuasion. Hey, but it's their fault. I'm using inspiration. <laughs> I want to get two. Than two. Can you roll anything other than twos on persuasion? We're going to find out right now. <laughs> I can, ah! apparently. Hey. Oh, oh, yeah. Three. Moving on up. It was almost a 19, too, and I, I watched it go oh. by, and I was like, it, that's not staying. You, you stay right where you are. And he, he's slowly, like, backing away, but he's keeping his eye on you and his sword drawn towards you, and he ducks his head into the, the, the guard post, and like, oi, oi! And he steps inside and starts running up the stairs. Uh, it seems like he can get help. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, While he's doing that, can I... Leave. <laughs> well, not without Mona. Don't leave me. Well, um, <laughs> how do we fix webs? I cause it problems, is, I don't solve it, them. It is a concentrate. <laughs> yes, but Stop. if I unconcentrate, I will let go of the other two guards. And I don't want to do that. What? Three guards, but yeah. Oh, right. Um... <laughs> Can I misty step out of web? Absolutely can. <laughs> <laughs> so Edgar's like panicking <laughs> and looking around like, how do I do this? How do I do this? And Mona's now standing across the street. <laughs> like, oh, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a suggestion. And then I just start running. I was going to say, are we having a polite conversation while the guards are coming to get us? <laughs> I am just running, and, uh... Oh, it's... it's a, oh, it's a... Shut in. So welcome the east to Bray Shander. Just came in through cell. the east gate. <laughs> Great. And... I say we run to the southwest gate. <laughs> I'm just going to follow you guys. So as you enter the town... There's snow on the ground, and we're going to leave footprints, so... Uh, it is well traveled. Ah, <laughs> uh, good. Uh, and it's it's still daytime, so there's still people out and about, even though it is dark. Uh, there's actually a lot more people out and about than you're seeing in cities. This this city, uh, 
even makes East Haven seem a bit small. Uh, it's nighttime, as far as we know. It It is past daylight, that's all you know. Well, it's always past daylight. That it is. That it so is. they were just being tools. I don't feel bad anymore. <laughs> no, they, they the gates do open every once in a while. Uh, so yeah, you uh, are inside the town of Bryn Shander and able to around as you please now, with possibly one of you being a wanted person. <laughs> hey, that uh, disguise kit potion you have <laughs> might be useful. Well, that's um, I don't know. Mm. Um, I'm below their sight line. I'll be fine. <laughs> uh-huh. What would you guys like to do? If only we had a rib cage for you to hide in. Now that would be something. That would be something. Can I fit in your rib cage? <laughs> of a dragon. Well, any of us could do that. That's not special. So as you guys are having this conversation in. walking down the street, every once in a while someone just kind of turns and hustles along. I say we I find can cast... you. Oh. Go for it. No, I was going to say I could cast invisibility on Edgar if um, it gets dire enough. That's true. That'd be cool. Um, I say we find an inn of someone who... Will the guards in or a be, tavern? Will the guards be looking at the tavern? Uh, mm. Maybe. Either way, finding someone who knows the ins and outs of the town and can lead us to copper. Um, so our copper is. Isn't he? I believe he's in like a shack. Oh, House of the House of, House of the Morning Lord. Yes, House of the Morning Lord. I don't know why I thought a shack. Uh, it is the House of the Morning Lord. Yeah, I have my notes. Bryn Chander, Copper Gnome, House of the Morning Lord. Air quotes. Paylor. Yep. <laughs> uh, Morning Lord would be Lanthandar, I believe. That's the only Morning Lord I can think of. All right. Well, we just need to. All right. Well, we just need to find someone who knows where that is, because I don't. Well, since every time I talked to someone recently, it went horribly for us. I delegate that responsibility to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're gonna stop talking? I'm going to stop talking to people outside of this group. We could stop in at the tavern um, and, and ask around. Someone there would probably know. But we have to find a tavern. Oh, no, yeah. That is either. I'm going to go up to someone that is not a guard. <clears throat> Wise. <laughs> Excuse me. Do you know where we can wet our throats? Ah, uh, you're looking. You're looking for the north. Look, it's uh, wait, well, judging on your uh, four of your uh, conditions, yeah, you're looking for the north. Look, definitely. That's the north side of town, right by the north gate. <clears throat> Wonderful. And she kind of like uh, ducks her head down and just shuffles away quickly. Strange. All right. Wait. Not that anything's normal here. True. When has anything been normal in this entire place? Um, okay. I say we make it's our way not, there. Not us. <laughs> yeah. This is fair. Yeah. Okay. So you head uh, north through the streets. It does take you about a half hour, 45 minutes to make your way across town. Uh, it is a very large city. You started off here and you asked directions probably about here. So you make your way through this maze and you make it all the way up to the north look. And as you approach it, um, I mean, it, it looks like pretty much a stereotypical tavern that you're used to. There's a, you know, there's a sign hanging out front uh, that, that describes it as the north look Inn, and uh, 
there's warm glow coming out of all the frosted windows from the side. There is uh, a, a couple of chimneys spouting up smoke above. There is a, uh, a smell of ale on the air as well as a smell of uh, smoke. Mm. And there's a, there's a large half-orc just kind of sitting outside uh, the, the door on a stool, just his arms crossed over him, his, his chin kind of resting down on his chest and just kind of sitting there. Evening. Eh. And I'm going to try to go through the doors. <laughs> <laughs> I go through the doors. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was expecting a bouncer as well. <laughs> yeah. So you guys walk in, and uh, it is a fairly crowded tap room, actually. Uh, it's it's weird, actually. This is the first time that you've seen a tavern much the like that you would see along the Sword Coast. All of the tables, for the most part, have people at them. There's talking, mm. there's drinking, there's food on the table. Um, it's it, it it's a it's a tavern. Uh, like it's what you expect when you enter a tavern for the first time. Uh, you do see over one of the fireplaces, there is this huge stuffed and mounted knucklehead trout. It looks... I... Oh, you didn't even make that up. Oh. Yeah, no, they, um, it's like a lore Ooh, part like, of this place and as you Ooh, look as you look at it head. underneath the uh, uh underneath this scarred and battle the uh, uh, this battle scarred and, and uh worn out knucklehead trout is the name all bitey how good's the taxidermy on this thing can i get an appraisal on that uh it is exquisite i must know who made this <laughs> <laughs> edgar is so weak <laughs> You're saying this now? Except for the fact that I'm fairly certain that was just Greg. <laughs> no, that is that is more Edgar oh, than Okay. <laughs> but it is I, both. I'm 50-50 on taxidermy as a, as myself, but Edgar is So yeah. Um, taxidermy, he's got some strange hobbies. Um I mean, don't touch it. No, I'm not. I'm going to inquire with the barkeep. I immediately kind of just go and start warming myself by the fire. <laughs> That's my first order of business. Oh, you want a pint? So, as you as you guys start heading past this uh, this wall with this um, fish on it to get to the bar, you just hear a song drift out from the mouth of the fish. <laughs> There's a place I no. like to go farther up the river's flow. Where it is, I do must be under all that snow. <laughs> I'm sitting at the fireplace and I'm just looking up at it like. <laughs> uh, you are the only one looking up at it. No one else seems to care. Oh my god. Look at that <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Bugaboo Creek? Yep. Um, oh, does it pays attention to it? It's just a singing fish on the wall. Uh, Man, so, Hawk, you're going up to get uh, drinks? All right, Hawk, did you want a, a pint? Yes, and also ask the innkeep if he can help us find the House of the Morning Lord. You head up to, to the bar. Who's heading up to the bar? Uh, I'll follow Mona. I am. You mean Mina? You mean Mina? Because Mona is staring at old Mona's at the fire. <laughs> I'm going to get it. You're going to get it at level 12, right as the final fight is starting. I would like to note that Sean and I did not talk about our names before deciding that. <laughs> Which is probably part of the problem. In fairness, as soon as I found out about it, they offered to change their names, to which I responded, hell no, that's going to be amusing. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, 
so you head up to the the bar and there is a um a human and behind the the counter uh well built uh old Our grizzled uh scruffy beard definitely a lot of gray in his beard at this point um his hair pulled back in a t in a tail behind and uh so uh who's up at the bar uh, just uh three of you except for mona yeah <clears throat> eh. what can i get you I'd like uh, a piece of your finest ale please dang a second that and i'm for you uh, uh the same the same pulls out three mugs Walks behind him, uh, pulls on the tap of a, of a cask, fills all three up, slides Nina across the counter to you. falls on the floor because Edgar's drinking a pint. Uh, that'll be a... Uh, that'll be a silver. Oh, can you add a fourth? Sorry. Oh, of course, yeah. Grabs it. Back. Uh, that's a... That's an extra uh, three, three copper on top of that. I got this round and I toss him three silver. Huh. Thank you kindly. Does the thing where he bites one of the silvers before he tucks it into a lockbox behind the uh, Don't blame you. counter. <clears throat> uh, I have a question, sir. Absolutely, Master Raffling. Where... What is the story of O'Bitey? Oh, <laughs> oh bitey, yeah. So, uh... That us. Well, you know about the knucklehead trout of the area, yeah? You're, you're, you're not new to Icewind Dale? Oh, no, we know so much about the knucklehead trout. I don't know anything. All right, so knucklehead trout is the fishing industry. So that's, that's one of them back over there on the, the wall there is a knucklehead trout. Now, old Bitey over there, he was a fearsome bitch, yeah? He was one of the biggest knucklehead trout to ever come out of the lake. Came out of Mayor Dwaldon. Finally, he was caught by uh, a guy named uh, uh, Kintir. I always forget the name. Uh, and uh, hauled him up. And uh, they were looking to uh, look it for themselves. But you know what? I saw it. I couldn't resist. So I bought it for here. And uh, had him stuffed. Then... Years ago, fucking thing starts singing. <laughs> Does it now? How yeah. How long has it been here if it started singing four years ago? Uh, about six years now, I think, give or take. Great. All right. All right. Yeah, if I had to guess, one of so those goddamn finger singing. wigglers put a, put a spell on it. Does it always sing the same thing? Always the same four goddamn lines. Tell when it's gonna start. Never can tell when it's gonna stop. Sometimes it sinks it five times in a fucking row. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Huh. Gotten rid of that. She has yeah, you I would have too. Someone to get rid of it. That's that's well. No, the the spell. Has anyone gotten uh, rid of the spell? That's too. It's so loud in here. I'd have barely asked. Him. Plus, it gets some good laughs. Like, like. Look at that one over there. She hasn't stopped staring at us since she walked in. She's just she's enthralled. <laughs> Is he yes. pointing? Yeah. He's pointing right at Mona. At Mona, I mean. Yep. I did myself. Whoa. <laughs> You're not immune. No. <laughs> uh, well, I do have a question. Um, Absolutely. Who, who did that wonderful preserving work on the fish? Who prepared it for the wall? Oh, it was a it was a guy here in town. Uh, hey. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Quick, Rob, make up a name. It was a uh, it was a dwarf, if I remember correctly. Archibald Humanman. <laughs> I really Beauty just need to start and... keeping a list of random names in front of me. His name was a uh, 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 Homret Homret Ashrock. He's got a shop at the south end of town. Home, I'm not going to ask you to spell it because I'd never do. Home rent Ash Rock. <laughs> was that close? I was certainly close. 
Home rent. <laughs> what's his what what's his name? Pronounce it again for me. Homerit. Homerit. Homerick. I like Homerit. 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 The T. Homerit. It's H O U M R E T. Listen, sir. I know how to spell when I hear things properly. He leans My over and he looks out of the paper and he looks back up at you. There you do. Maybe you should take it a little slower on that pipe there. <laughs> Ashrock? Yes. Ashrock. Excellent. Um, Get our name pronunciations right. <laughs> that's all I needed to know. Oh, is there anything else I can help you with? There, uh, some food? Where can we find the uh, House of the Morning Lord? That's, uh, uh, morning, Lord. And none of you look like any of those religious fo- uh, You know what? Sorry, that's that's my bad. I shouldn't be pressing. Uh, that's going to be on the north northeast side of town. Uh, just going to follow this road. If you come out of uh tavern here and take a left, follow that road down and uh, keep going. Eventually, you're going to find it's a big walled-in area, and right outside that's a big build. House of the morning. Wonderful. And... Where would where might one find lodging if they were on the more discreet side? I mean, I have rooms here. And how much Why does Why do you have cost? to make it sound creepy? Am I going to be paying my uh, my friend outside to be protecting you overnight? Not protecting, just... Uh, how much does it cost to just scrub a little face from your friend's memory? I have gold. <laughs> Again, I say. Each. Why well, you got to make it sound creepy? How much? Five gold. Five gold each. Well, I imagine they're only looking for one of us. <gasps> oh. I imagine. Well, I will have a conversation. What should I say to your friend outside when I deliver him the gold? Well, if you, if you want him to forget, I would suggest not talking <laughs> to him. <laughs> Well, I, I doubt he noticed our faces. He seemed uh, preoccupied. Look, slumber. if you want a room here, it's a gold apiece. Look around the room. Do, do I look like the kind of guy who gives a shit about your business? And you look around. Sure. It is... Uh, start to notice now as you're looking around that none of the people in here are dressed nicely. There's, there's gambling going on in one corner. Drinking contest very clearly happening at another one. Uh, you see a fist fight break out in the back court. All that happens is you see the door to the establishment open, and the half orc walks in, grabs the little gnome that started the fist fight, picks him up, and just walks out and tosses him into a snowbank. Edgar, I think if you wanted the uh, less or the more discreet tavern, this is it. Only he's right. made it not so discreet by just asking about it. Sorry, I. <laughs> I will. It's fine. It's, it's, it's fine, buddy. You're, you're new at this. Person. You're new at this. You'll get better at your thieving ways. I promise. I don't care. I didn't steal anything. Yeah, and I know none of us stole nothing. <laughs> no, I was not framed. Wrong. It's fine. Just, you know what? I'm feeling generous tonight. I can give you guys. What you want? One room or two rooms? Uh, how many? How many of us? Two rooms, and I'll put down five gold. All right, I was gonna say two gold, but I'll take the five, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Now, do you have? You know what? For that too, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you guys uh, some some meal. I you know you each get a chicken. It's kind of what? bags on the back. <laughs> a live chicken. chicken for dinner. No, I, I need, hopefully it's cooked because I don't want to cook it. <laughs> After a couple of minutes, it's, it's platter comes out, and it's, I mean, it's a small thing, and it's probably like like a Cornish game hen size, um, but it's got some nice root vegetables next to it, and 
it's it's actual meat, which is seen like cooked in East Wind. Edgar cries a little. <laughs> Literally, what I had for dinner. <laughs> I had chicken with some vegetables and like a light broth. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice. Now that I'm sounds hungry, delicious. Yes. Sounds very wholesome and nice. Yeah. Joe strikes me as a pretty wholesome guy, so. Mm. I had chicken nuggets, so. <laughs> Hell yeah. I had pork tenderloin. I had tortellinis. tortellinis. So as you guys are eating your dinner, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do hear every once in a while the fish starts singing. Uh, uh, Mona, have you joined them with for dinner, or are you still staring at the fish? Um, I was still staring at the fish, but I can join them. So they, you do see out of the corner of your eye as they bring their, their plates over to an empty table and sit down, and there is a mug of ale and a, uh, a dinner plate sitting there growing if, if Mona's still looking at the fish, by the time we do that, I'll go and guide her back to the table. Yeah. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm with the group now. <laughs> Feeling a lot better. <laughs> so the meal is warm. It's it's filling. It's not the best paste, tasting bird that you've ever had, like meal that you've ever had. But it's it's not gruel, um, and it's not trail rations. Um, which, uh, how are you guys doing on trail rations? How how many days have you been on the trail? And well, how many days did we travel? So by my estimation, you traveled the day between the first two towns, a day between the second two towns, although you did get breakfast before you left and probably dinner in town. So probably just one per those days. I take it my two different f abilities that allow me to find food and everything will not help. I mean, they would like help helping with rations. It, they would help if you remember to go hunting. Yeah. yeah. So do you That's want us fair. to mark off three? Uh, no, just start tracking it going forward. Uh, become important. Oh, good. All right. So inventory well, rations. Got 15 and I'm not sharing with any of you. <laughs> <laughs> how many I'm do we have? How many rations I have? Uh, I believe you start, with, you start with 10 generally. A uh, export to get. Yeah, okay. it depends on which one you take, though, because some of them don't have any. I probably didn't take that one. Yeah. I will say that you start off with 10. Okay, so we're down to 7. So, uh, you eat your meal. You are full. It is dark outside. have rooms for the night. Are you crashing for the night, or are you setting out this evening? Uh, about what time is it to us? Uh, so now that you're inside and... And you can tell that it is definitely just past dinner time. You ate dinner pretty much at dinner time, actually, from, from judging um, the way that things are going. I mean, there's still food being served and everything, but it's it's getting later on in the evening. Well, do we want to head out now, or do we want to head out tomorrow refreshed? Well, if it's a holy house, if they'll probably open 24-7, but it's probably better to go during the day. Yeah, I feel like the morning is um, more appreciated in this town rather than after dinner. I think recovering from the journey we just had would be beneficial That's as well. It. Yes, it was a long walk. As you have a flashback of a <laughs> I need to dragon clean. erupting out of snow. Does he all take damage? So you're yeah. gonna head to your room for the night. Yeah. So you head to your yeah. rooms, and the first thing you notice when you go inside, aside from the fact that there are two beds in each of the rooms, is there's actually a small little hearth there, a little fireplace that already has oh. some, uh, a small fire going. Um, there's not much in there. It's, it's a coal fire, uh, so it doesn't smell the best, but it, it definitely keeps the room warm. Uh, this town is definitely more well-equipped to handle the winter wasteland than others, it seems. Um, I like this place. All right, so who's sleeping where? Edgar, well, do you have more questions for me? Funny you should ask. I have two things. Uh, it's been a long day, so I'll limit it to two. Um, 
So Mona and Hawk are going to sleep in one room <laughs> <laughs> and Mina and Edgar in the other. Is that what I'm gathering? More, more accurately, Mona and Hawk are going to not sleep in one room. <laughs> true. Yeah. That's, That's true. We don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they meditate. I meditate and you read. I don't know. And I do creepy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Blair Witch in the corner. So you guys go in there, and this is the first time you've probably noticed each other, the fact that you don't actually, either one of you actually sleeps. Like, Mona doesn't even go into the bed. You just go over to, like, some, some work. And Hawk, you start to meditate, and then you know, you're just sitting on the bed meditating. And after about halfway through the night, you just kind of look at each other, and you realize that neither one of you is going to sleep. You're like, huh. Oh. <laughs> Funny that. And meanwhile, uh, Edgar is halfway through his questioning. Uh, it's, I just have two quick experiments I'd like to run with you. First one's painless. I promise. What about the second one? <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, <sighs> might I try cutting off a piece of your hair? My hair. I'm you can sure. just regrow it. Sure. All right. Um, I'd like to snip off a chunk of it with a, a knife or some scissors. Sure. What happens to the hair once it leaves your hand? Your body? It's hair in your hand. But is it red or is it the pale white from before? Uh, it is the red that uh, it is whatever hair you color hair that Nina has as you cut it. Interesting. Okay. Um, this next one will be slightly painful, but I promise to immediately fix the harm I do, and I will allow you one punch. This fucking guy. <laughs> one free punch. All right, what are you gonna do? Just I would like to cut a I would like to cut a small piece of flesh off of your arm. <laughs> That's a sentence. <laughs> Hang on. Mina runs outside, gets some snow, sticks it on her arm, runs back upstairs. Nice. Uh, right. Your arm I, is I, numb at this point. All right. All right. Go uh, I'm going to sterilize both the blade and the area with, I imagine, some reagents I have. Sure. And I'm going to carve a small sliver, probably about. Half inch in diameter. All right. So you cut a hunk of flesh out of your My party arm member's arm. That's the weirdest feeling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and it, I'm going... Even with the numbness, it hurts like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Can I get a constitution okay. saving throw? Sure. And you take one point of damage. But don't mark it off because I already long run. And I'm going to heal it anyway. You. You bite your lip, and a little bit of blood trickles into your mouth from biting your lip so hard, but you manage to not scream. All right, um, I'm going to set that aside onto a cloth, and I'm going to pull out a small, a small, a small vial out of my sack, one of the, um, one of the splatter healing potions, and yep. I'm going to rub some into the cut and hand her the rest to swish her mouth with. And it will heal, I so think, a D4 plus yeah, my intelligence. So you're, you're healed at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, your wound heals. At the, you can see there's a little bit of a pink mark where, where he cut out, but... Um, whatever. Doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> nope. Now, does anything happen to the flesh I cut off? It is a hunk of flesh sitting on a cloth. <laughs> uh... I'd like to apply a small amount of electricity using my glove. This is getting creepy. Uh, all right. So you, you put your glove next to it, and Mina, you've never smelled what you smell like cooked, but you have now. <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying to do like a... Like, so a little, yeah, a, a little lot. jolt. You still, like, a small little bit of smoke uh, comes up off of it, and there is the stench of uh, burning flesh a little bit, but a very slight, like, uh, like when you shock yourself, like, on an outlet. 
type of thing. And it's nothing happens with it. It doesn't change in any way. Nope. Huh. It's just my species, man. I, I know. I'm just trying to figure out. I'm just like you. I just happen to be able to change shape. I know. I'm. I. I understand that this is normal for you, but you're a species that is not well known. I'm trying to understand the mechanisms by how this happens, whether it's chemical or nerve based, or if it's a magic that is running throughout your body and through your veins. I, I'm looking to get behind what it is, so I can replicate it. All right. You do your thing. I'm going to sleep. And, and yeah. to bed. All right. And that's, so you, it. that's it for me. Cool. So you guys go to sleep, and uh, you wake up the next morning feeling refreshed. Uh, you have that phantom feeling of somebody cutting a chunk out of your arm a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> especially after you wake up and you look over on the desk and there's still in a jar a hunk of flesh sitting there um, you're so weird edgar <laughs> and uh yeah would you if you go downstairs there will be the ability to get breakfast and such and on your way sounds good yeah morning meeting quick meeting at the table as you guys, uh, so the, the morning, it's it's kind of like an oatmeal that you're you're eating um, in the morning. Um, no meat with this meal. It looks like a little bit, a little bit less uh, hearty of a meal this time. So seems like uh, they maybe get like one really good meal a day type of thing, or maybe last night was a special occasion or something along those lines. But it still, yeah, it fills you up just fine. All right, so we're gonna go talk to. Copper? Is that the name? Yeah. Copper. Yes. Nice. Did did the barkeep tell you where the where we can find him? What part of town? Uh yes. Yes. He said we come out of the out of the inn, take a left, follow it around. There's a big gated in area and a big building. Excellent. Doesn't sound like it's too far away, so Edgar. That's good. You feel a pulsing from your pack. Oh, no. Uh, I reach in and search for the source of the pulsing. Is it the sending stone? It is the sending stone, yes. So <gasps> you pull the sending stone out. Oh, hello, hello, hello. How are you all today? Hello, good morning, good morning. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can, we can hear you wonderfully, sir. Oh, excellent. I was just checking in. Did you make it over to Bryn Shander safely? No troubles along the way, I suspect. What Hello, is can you hear me? Not we it got quiet. we made it. We survived. We're fine. Ah. We're here. We're happy. Excellent. Have you have you found copper yet? We're about to. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yes, well, I was just checking in. Oh, don't forget, I would still love some of that chardelin stuff you are talking about. So if you find any of that, bring it my way. Yes. We didn't yes. forget, don't worry. Oops. Excellent, excellent. Right, well, uh... Goodbye. Yes, uh, have a have a lovely day. <laughs> we'll update you, you as well. soon as we make contact with Copper. Oh, perfect, perfect. Sounds great. Don't get oh. lost in any blizzards. <laughs> Brian, does <laughs> Copper know that we're coming? Why would he? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> have a wonderful day, Brian. You'll realize I don't know him, right? This is the fourth time you've asked me if I know him, and I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is elsewhere. <laughs> All right, then. Have a lovely day. Stay warm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Too soon. Uh -huh. I have too no problems with that. Too soon for what? And this. <laughs> too soon. Does he know about... Our journey? No, it's it's just a phrase. No, I know, but never mind. Shall we go? Have you seen the singing fish on the wall? Yes. Yes. I have. I just love I love the song. I love that. 
Oh, right. You like dead things that are not dead. Uh, sorry, we can we can head out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's head right. to the House of the Morning Lord. Oh. So uh, you Are head you across. I'm humming the fish song while we're walking. Silence. No, you don't have to give us an arrow. Right? I I There's imagine. No, map. I I wasn't. I was pulling up a different map to to look at something. Um. Well, so uh, you make your way across town, and uh, you find a large, uh, a large building in front of you. Um, it is. It appears to be a church. All right, I am trying to find the description. I'm stalling. Uh, it's actually, um, it's a large building, but it it appears like once upon a time it was just a house. Um, or a couple of houses that have kind of been, like, joined together. Over... Um... Hmm. Yeah. And there is Does any... a... Uh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> uh, there, there appears to be a, um, a symbol above the door frame. It is a, uh, a sun. Does anybody know the etiquette that comes with entering a place like this? Can I check? If I know? Ah, uh, sure. I mean, give me a religion check. A uh, religion check? Okay. Yeah, because I feel like Edgar grew up in a. You know, how was he entering the last church you guys went in? Um. Yeah, that seems about right. Uh. <laughs> oh, right. Let me. Can, may I? Uh. Yes. Nope, no better. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you don't know. Is, is this going to be more like the we don't do that here sort of scene from, uh, what is it, Infinity War when he tries bound <laughs> the, the King oh, of Wakanda? Yes. It's definitely going to be much like that. Just Mina and I making buffoons of ourselves, you know. That's our job. <laughs> We just start speaking in abyssal and scare everybody. So, going in? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you step inside, you can see that, like, the, the main part of the house that this once was, was um, emptied out. Like, the walls have been cleared. There's some pillars to support where walls once were. And there does appear to be a small shrine that has uh, several candles along it. Um and there is a woman who is uh, tending to some of the candles and, and appears to be lighting them. Hawk, I nominate you. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, hello, how are you? I'm um, well, how are you? Very well, welcome to his light. Thank you. And also um, with you. <laughs> Lift up our hearts. <laughs> Real Catholic. Um, not really, because that's not the phrase anymore. Is it really? It's nope. been a while. Um, is that something that I, I can help you, do you with? Do you know of a gnome uh, by the name of Coppa? Ah, yes. He rents my attic. Interesting. What business have you with him? Uh-oh. Is there something about him we should know? He's a son of a bitch, is what he is. Uh, pardon me? Ma'am. <clears throat> As... Uh, out of character... Uh, not out of character, but... It, House of the Morning Lord. Is, the, uh, is this Paylor? Would I know this is Paylor? No, yes. Can I make Would a you? check for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me a real check. Okay. See if I read up on things. Um so 
Edgar and I have. You know that uh, the Morning Lord uh, or God of the Sun, um, based off the symbol outside, is uh, generally Lathander. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh. Yep, that, uh, that podcast will never let me say that name in my head the same way ever right <laughs> right wait what and i'm sad is, that uh, it was uh it stopped oh crap what was the yeah, i understand uh, chris, why it stopped chris perkins um dm yes uh, chris perkins is started a with a curse of Strahd. amazing He's yeah no, amazing. one of them is a cleric of cleric of no paladin of Lathander. paladin yep she would say things like the power of the thander <laughs> <laughs> and oh my god <laughs> um, yeah so that's what you uh that's what you can suss out that's what uh Wraith Wraith was a paladin of Lathander before. Yeah, I know. Uh, before he changed going through my head then too. Okay. Okay, Lathander. Alright. Um Does he usually have company or visitors or anything? I'm aware of, no. I'm not has he done either. anything to offend you specifically, or is he just generally a a miserable a... little creature. Mm. And as you uh, as you're saying this, you you hear a noise behind you as one of the doors open, and um, a small, furry looking creature uh, walks out carrying a broom, just kind of like waddling along, and just starts sweeping the floor. Huh. It looks, uh, from the angle that you're at right now, the best I can describe it, it looks like a teddy bear that has been animated. Uh, we got Ewoks. Ewoks. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. I take it that's his doing? What? No, that's that's no? him. Okay. That's Copper. Oh. Great. Copper, Copper you have visitors. <laughs> would, you, would you put out the... Br uh, you can sweep in a... Mo would you... Uh, Copper and stops and oh, what? Oh, hey! And he turns and you can see the face of a gnome poking out from a fuzzy hood, and it's about like this much of his face is visible, and you can clearly tell that he can barely hear through all of the insulation. And you, as as he turns towards you, you see that it is not in fact a teddy bear; it is just a very fuzzy, like onesie style that he's dolled up in, and he so he's models a furry. And, and, there's, oh, what? Oh, visitors! Weird! Visitors! Hello! Hello! And he starts waddling. Toward How do they not know each other? Huh? <laughs> I only have so many voices. <laughs> and that's racist. Not all gnomes know all gnomes. They just sound like brothers. That's all. No voice. Um, <laughs> so you you're copper. Ah, what? Take your hood off. No, it's cold. Why would I do that? So you can hear people. What? Oh, good lord. Uh, I get down on the floor next to him. And he sees I you sit down the on the out. floor. He's, he sees you sit down on the floor. He's like, oh! And he sits down on the floor. And I lean in, and I pull the hood away from his ear. Ah, oh! And I say, may we have a word with you? Oh, yes, of course. My name's right. Copper. Copper Nubberknocker. All right, I'm going to continue <laughs> to hold your hood unless you do. Okay. Well, he can hear us now. Uh, yes, I can hear you just fine. Uh, why was that a concern? I'm not deaf. No. I let the hood go and I try talking to him again. What? Exactly. What? I pulled the hood back. Oh, hello. Uh, all right, so somebody else has to talk to him because... I don't know the whole story off the top of my head. I am also brushing myself up on this out of character. Sorry. Was well, he... He was doing experiments, right? I 
can't remember. Hawk. I Copper, are Copper. you in need of help? What? No. Unless you want to do my chores for me. No, not necessarily. Right? Uh, Copper, does... Does the name Targost mean anything to you? Ah, uh, it is city. Right, it is. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Arthur's here. <laughs> He's a little slow, isn't he? Sometimes. Does the Guardians of Ethereum... Athenium. <laughs> the Guardians of Athenium. Athenium. Guardians Athenium. Guardians Athenium. Athenium. Guardians Athenium. Uh, no. Should they? Do you know of a Bran Ravenstone? Raventown. Raventown. Never heard of him. Interesting. All right, fourth question. You're doing great. What? <laughs> <laughs> Not a single one of you wrote down what you're supposed to do here, did you? I wrote down Copper. He's a gnome in Brinch and I, and I hoped someone would get the rest. Copper, um, yes. what is it that you do here? Uh, I, I take care of some chores around the church here, and in exchange, I get a room. Copper, do you, do, do you have any hobbies? I have a few. And what they might they be? Uh, what? What? <laughs> Who are you people? That's what we're trying to find out. <laughs> you don't know who you are. We oh. know who we are. We don't know who we Mishan, are. Mishan, I think they are. You. I think they are quite ill. Mm. Copper, have you noticed anything strange recently? Besides us. Well, I mean, uh, is the everlasting winter going on? Everyone's noticed that. Something <laughs> you've noticed. Well, I noticed that too. Something just you have noticed. <laughs> uh, it gets surprisingly dusty in here, considering not many people come through. Oh, Vapors from the pit. I'm going to walk to a different part of the room and take out the the sending stone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you take out the sending stone, <clears throat> and it uh, you, and yes, he's not wrong. He he did say he was going to make contact with him after we made contact yep. with Copper. Yeah. I'd like uh, to. Hello. Questions. How are you, Bran? Wonderful to yes. hear your voice. Yes, it's Bran. Nice <laughs> to hear from you. It. It's Edgar. We have made contact uh, yes, with... Yes, the Sending Stones only go to one place, Edgar. Well, I was... There are four of us, so I was being specific. You yeah, announced so yourself. Anyways, what do you want? Uh, we've made contact with Bran. We wanted to know if... Yes, I am Bran. We've made contact with Corva. <laughs> <laughs> and we wanted to know if there was anything specific you wanted us to ask him besides, you know... Besides, what? Are you going to make me say? Edgar, you have no idea why you're there, do you? No. It's been a, a lot. A lot has happened. I don't think he told us. I don't um, know. Papa has been talking in the local taverns, and it got back to us, that one of his friends <laughs> was experimenting in a cabin in the north. You the shack I was were very of. interested in this cabin that was hosting <laughs> magical experiments. So I said, why don't you go talk to Copper Knobberknocker? He is said to know something about that. <laughs> Copper's friend experimenting in the north. Okay, writing it down. <laughs> I'm just going to call across the room. Did the rest of you hear that? Yes. yes. Yep. <laughs> then I leave the rest to you. <laughs> Goodbye, Bran, and I put the, the stone. Oh, you're, you're asking about Macradus. The, the what? Macradus. Macradus, my friend. 
Uh, he was he was conducting research at an old cabin up in the wilderness, uh, to the north, north, uh, north of our family, north of the forest of lonely. Actually, uh, experiments on what exactly? Do you know? Uh, surprisingly, no. Yes, spelled exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> Oh, I heard it, the Kratos. Yeah. Is it Mick Kratos? You need to get some headphones so that you can hear. Me. I heard Mac Kratos. <laughs> no, I just have an auditory processing issue. <laughs> it's been like this my whole life. I grew up thinking volley volleyball was volleyball. Oh. So, so what's Mick Kratos doing? So you thought that Hollywood. And well, I didn't know about Bollywood until after I knew about the correct spelling of, vo of volleyball, so. Anywho, we digress. <clears throat> uh, yes, so uh, what 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 are you asking about from Macratus? Uh, I'm I'm quite concerned. I concerned. Well, I haven't, not... haven't heard from her in a long time. Well, you can go check on her for you. Oh, that would be amazing if you could check in. Uh, he was she was trying to build a device that could actually end this eternal winter. Oh. Oh, there's a, that, there's a reason. Oh, did I not start with that? I'm sorry. No. I thought I no, mentioned it when we dust. were talking about the miserable No, and weather. I even asked the question, and you, you dodged it, so... I dodged <laughs> I'm still holding your hood out. You can hear me. Yes. I'm right in front of I you. I could hear you with a hood on, too. It would be really funny seeing your face. <laughs> and you hear from across the room on the... Uh... <laughs> I get it now. And sorry, where did you say that Macratus um was located to the north past oh, the uh, Yes, to the north, past the Lonely Wood Forest. Uh here. Uh, do you have a map? I can point it out. Do we have one or do we want one? Have one. Past the Lonely Wood Forest? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, you Lonely do. Wood. Yep. Well, yes, Hawk, Hawk has a map. Good lord, that is north north. Okay. All right. Put it on your map for me so you can see it. Heads up on the time. Yep. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yes, there it is. Oh. All right. North of the Lonely Wood, huh? Wait, that is very north. Are we supposed to be looking at a different map? Give me a second. Now you can see it on your map. I just see Brinchendar. Oh, there's a little pin. There it is. Where are you getting this map, sir? It's it's the uh, Iceland Icewind Dale map I just shared to you. We have one of those. What map have you been using when we travel between towns? <laughs> uh, whatever one Rob puts on the screen. You see it now. <laughs> I just shared it. So it must be open somewhere if it's not popping in front of all of you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have it open. It open. I have it no, open. I, yeah, it's on my yeah screen. exactly. I'm talking to Greg, who is staring bewildered at the screen right now. Uh, my screen is... <laughs> and like that is where we are going to wrap up for this evening <laughs> as they have <laughs> sussed out that they need to go to the cabin north of the Hollywood Forest to figure out what Macraeus was doing to attempt and oh, the everlasting rhyme. Thank you all for joining us, and we will see you in two weeks' time as we case files a rhyme of the frog actual play campaign. And just real quick, thank you, Sirenscape, for the music that you guys have been hearing. Uh, I think I've up on it. Not the bad at it. Yep, it's still been playing in the background. I'm gonna get better at it. I'm doing like seven seven things. Have a lovely night, everyone. Sorry, y'all, my brain.